she came into my office and she was wearing a sweatshirt. And through the sweatshirt, a bulky material, you could see her collarbones. And I said to Catherine, I said, Kat, look what you have done to yourself. Look at where you are. You're wasting away. I can see your collarbones through, through your sweatshirt. She thought it was typical Miss G, just, you know, talking to her about the usual. And that's when I pulled her around to my computer screen and I showed her an article of a young lady who um, had an eating disorder, put herself in the hospital with seizures and all kinds of severe um, organ shutdowns and whatnot, who fortunately recovered and had made it her mission to help educate other women. We then went on to, to look at an article about a woman who had killed herself through an eating disorder. And, and only then did I see in her face that I hadn't been, not that she thought I was lying, but that I hadn't been trying to change her ways through a shock, you know, shock and all uh, effect. Uh, I really was trying to tell her the truth. And, and I think that was one of the first times she semi hurt me. Um, because she was a really smart girl. She really, really, really was a very smart girl. Um, I'll follow that up with the day that I won't forget of her coming into my office and closing the door and saying, I don't think I can stay here. And, um, and I asked her what she meant. And she said, she, she said, I think I've got to go away to get better. And, and that was the answer that I had been wanting her to come to for a while. But, but to hear her acknowledge it, I actually felt like we were going the right direction. She didn't know what was gonna happen with school and what people would think. And she was afraid. I first met Catherine when she came to St. Anne's Belfield in fourth grade. Um, right off the bat, we were friends. She was more enthusiastic and more cheerful than anyone I'd ever met in my life. I first met Catherine in the middle school when she was in life skills with me, and she was also a volleyball player. So that's how I, I first got to know her. And you couldn't help but notice how much energy she had and how people were drawn to her. And she was just engaged with everybody around her and all of the things. In high school, she became an advisee of mine. So we spent a lot of time together talking about um, classes and volleyball again. And again, she was always very excited about things. She got stressed like every high schooler, but she always had just an exhaustive amount of, of energy. She just made everyone laugh. And her laugh was like, like, <laughs> like <laughs> it was just like really unique and out there. She had a way to like make her friends feel like very welcome and comforted. And she was always there for everybody. She was artistic, she was beautiful, she never could see it, and that really made me sad. She'd look in a mirror and see a really ugly person looking back, and instead of seeing a really beautiful person. And I remember at one point, I, I think I asked her, um, she was really sad and it was in middle school, and I said, Kat, are you being bullied at school? And she never really gave me an answer. But I said, Kat, if you're being bullied, you know, and of course, I didn't know about all the social media that was out there. And I said, well, just if people are bullying you on Facebook, I said, unfriend them. She goes, Mom, you don't know what that means. She goes, you don't know what that means to unfriend somebody because it's horrible. Her energy, her positive energy just filled any room she was in. And everyone noticed it. Everyone would always comment about how positive she was and how enthusiastic she was. But she also had a very, she had a very unknown side. Um, she had a side that troubled, that was very troubled. She um, struggled with lots of things. Her smiles and her giggles and her laughs, it, it became something that didn't seem genuine anymore. And, you know, our friends would ask her, you know, Catherine, are you okay? Are you, do you have anything you want to talk about? And she never said a word about anything, but I think all of us knew for a long time that she struggled, um, but never spoke about it. That next summer, 
which was our our last summer together at camp, I noticed she had lost an extreme amount of weight. I knew that at this point it wasn't natural and definitely unhealthy. I first noticed um, that Catherine had a self-image issue but probably between eighth and ninth grade and I noticed that she wasn't, um, well that she would like go through some of her pictures on Facebook or any social media and she would criticize herself and how she looked and she was always just really worried about that. You could visibly see that she was losing weight. Uh, my advisory liked to eat a lot of food and, and Catherine never partook. And, and even her, her fellow classmates recognized that she wasn't eating during advisory. And they would make comments and you could tell as the adult in the room, you could tell that the other kids had no idea that she was struggling. They just could see that she wasn't eating. They didn't realize that she wasn't eating also beyond advisory. And so she and I, we would talk a great deal. We would have meetings. Um, she would slowly open up to me as, as far as what, what she was or wasn't doing. We started talking about the fact that eating disorders do kill and that was something that she did not comprehend. Catherine was a very smart girl and she would only, only share enough to kind of meet the questions that you were answering, but not enough to let you piece together the full picture. Um, and so she, she got by with, with telling us enough of what we wanted to hear, but, but we really truly didn't understand the full picture. Because I've talked to someone who is um, one of the top brain researchers in the field. It is something, there is a chemical imbalance in the brain with these kids and it allows this to happen. And they're in very often powerless to control their behaviors. And it's really, really scary because you're watching helpless as a parent and you don't know what to do. You just don't know what to do to make anything better. Spring of 2013, finally it became clear that she needed more help and I started taking her to the same nutritionist her sister went to. I got some alarming emails from her nutritionist in September and she said, I got two in one day and she said, Kat's willing to go see somebody, she needs to see somebody. It was decided that she was going to go into, we had to put her into treatment somewhere and we decided to put her into Veritas. And um, Kat was, it turned out so sick, she couldn't even go straight into Veritas. She had to go to UVA ahead of time. It was a Friday night and I got a call from Catherine, but I was at a concert and um, I, didn't, I didn't take it because I didn't get it until later on. And she'd left me a voicemail saying that she was being admitted to the UVA hospital. I'll never forget walking into that room and seeing her hooked to what seemed like hundreds of machines and she was just she had never looked so defeated and it broke my heart it was one of the last nights that she was going to be there because she was going to veritas after that we had a we had a good time in the hospital i'm just really thankful that the last time i saw her she was happy, even if it was in a, an unhappy place, like a hospital. And so I literally had to watch her 24 hours a day until we could get her into Veritas, which is what I did. And we got her in and she was so angry with me. I just remember the anger. Um, she's like, why are you doing this to me, mom? And I said, because I want you to be well. I don't want you to be sick anymore. You know, she got better, but I would get these panic phone calls from her saying, I want to come home, I hate it, they hate me, I just want to get out of here. And I knew the more she protested, the more she needed to stay there because it was just a sign that the, the eating disorder was too strong and it was just really forcing her to do this. She stayed at Veritas and I started seeing signs that she was coming around and getting better but now reflecting back on that, I don't know if it was that she was better or learning to say the right things that were going to get her out of there. You know, if she, because people, 
who have a mental illness very often will learn to manipulate their um, their therapists and their psychologists and they will learn to say exactly what is needed to get them out of that situation so and I'm not saying Catherine by nature was a manipulative person but I think ED as a disease is very manipulative and it does what it wants to get a person in the situation where it can be back in control well unfortunately Kat got out and all she wanted to do was get back to a normal quote unquote a normal life and I let her see her friends and things like that and I think her friends started seeing that the binging and purging but they were afraid and um, <clears throat> I remember Monday night she wasn't feeling well and I guess that should have been my sign to me maybe I should rehospitalize her but she just goes I'm not feeling good mom I'm just gonna go to bed and I guess I was so tired at that point I must have slept through the night I got up I went to work in the morning I should have checked on her and I was texting her that morning. And I just remember, um, I, I kept texting her. I was getting angry because she wasn't responding. And I came home and it was about 12.30 and I ran up and I found her in her bed. And I just started screaming. I just started screaming. I was screaming through the house. I just go, cat's dead, cat's dead. Oh my God, oh my God. When I'm walking in the hallway, it's Dab, and when I'm even when I'm in crowds of strangers, there'll be there'll be these moments where I swear that I can hear her laugh. I think it's because we all walk around with her on our minds, and sometimes not consciously. Sometimes it's just there because she's a part of us. She's always going to be a big part of our lives. And when you have a great friendship with someone, when someone's made your life part of theirs as well, then they are a part of you. She thought she was ugly and she thought she was dumb and she thought she wasn't funny and she thought she wasn't a great athlete. And in actuality, she was the opposite in all regards of what she thought she was. All I could think about was how sad it was that this child who did not believe people cared about her, her peers cared about her, liked her, thought she was funny, how wrong she was. Catherine's death kind of led me to understand that fact that this is my life, like this is the only time that I'm going to have here. and. It's my duty to honor her and honor everyone that has affected my life so greatly by being the best person that I can be every day. I want to make sure that that Kat didn't lose her life in vain and that she's remembered for all the good she did. The legacy that she's going to leave with people is that, you know, when you think about her, Think about laughter because she'd want you to smile and she'd want you to be happy um, and she wouldn't want you to be in pain. If you are feel like you're going through anything like this, seek help. Don't ever think that you're alone. You are never alone. You can't let ED take control of you and you can win.